Oh, hello, I didn't see you there. Welcome to this online educational video for the software HitFilm. Today we're going to be showing you how to create a One Division styled glitch transition. If you enjoyed that effect, please do hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. But before I revert back to my old self, let's figure out how we can do this. This tutorial can be followed in Express for free, though for export it does require the add-ons from the Distortion Pack, Retro 2 and Neon Lights. There's also a template available to download if you want to take a look at the setup. As seen in our opening example, I have two shots that I'm going to be using to transition between. So to start off, I'm going to bring them both into my composite shot and align the second shot to the point I want the transition to take over. I'm happy with the timing, though if I wanted to change these shots for another take, or perhaps some alternative effects, I'd potentially cause myself some problems. To keep things clean and easy, create a composite shot for each of your clips, naming one plate one and the other plate two or A and B. It just needs to be an indicator of which one is which in the sequence. Now we can alter these as much as we like without affecting the transition. We're going to be needing three separate transition mats for our effect. Let's get the foundation of them prepped before we do anything else. Go to the new layer icon and create a plane. Be sure to set it to white and name this Matte Reveal. And then hit OK. We're going to be using masks for our reveal. So with the layer selected, head up to the rectangular mask tool and double click. This will create a mask around the whole layer. If we head into the controls tab and enter the masks transformation settings, we can animate its path. I want the tear to begin from the center. So I'll switch over to the pen tool and close the mask on the X axis and place a keyframe. I'd like this animation to be quite slow. I'll jump ahead about two seconds on the timeline and open up the mask. With that done, now let's duplicate this layer. This one will be used for our edges later. So give it a rename. For the moment, turn off the visibility of these two layers and create another white plane layer. You may have guessed, but this is also going to be a matte reveal, this time with an ellipse mask. So we'll click and hold over the mask tools to bring up the options and select ellipse. Double click and the mask is set. Again, we'll go into the mask transformation settings and key the path. First, closed on the x-axis, then, this time only 30 frames later, open the mask to reveal the whole screen. For the transition to be smoother later on, dial up the feathering. With all the foundations set, we can turn each of these into separate composite shots. Right click and go to Make Composite Shot. Keep the original name and make sure to move the mask properties with your layer. Repeat this with the other two. Then jump back to your main composite shot. Let's connect our matte reveal to our first plate. First off, let's move all our transition mats to align with our second plate and move them under our footage for now. As play 2 is the one that will reveal itself, we're going to be applying the effects onto this layer. Go to the effects panel and search for set matte. You can find it under the matte enhancements in the keying folder. Change the source layer to our matte reveal, source to luminance, and blend to replace, though it should be already. If you play this on the timeline, you'll have the plate reveal itself as your mask does. This is okay, but we want it to glitch and contain some distortions. Let's jump into our main matte reveal and start distorting. So to warp these edges, we'll be applying various distortion effects, which are all found in the Distort folder. And the first thing we're going to add is the Smoke Distortion. And you can see already what this is doing to our edge. This is now completely up to you and your creative freedom, as you can scale this, increase the distortion, and then throw in some alternative distortions to make it really chaotic. After my Smoke Distortion, I applied Energy Distort, then a Block Displacement scaling this all the way down in size and displacement values. Then to make the blocks longer, head into the block settings and bring up the aspect ratio. <laughs> then why not more displacements? This time we can heat things up with a heat distortion. We really want those edges rough. This is looking good, so let's move on to our edges. Now the animation is the same as our other reveal, but in appearance we can make this really crazy. First, let's create our distortion. I'm going to keep this nice and easy with a little smoke distortion, followed by an energy distort. Really dialing up the distortion, but lowering the scale to have a high frequency ripple going on. Once you're happy with your effect, duplicate the layer, and apply a fill effect from the gradients and fill dropdown. Now we can set the color to black. We want this to be the inner edge of our tear, so we can give it a rename, then select the layer and position it back only a few frames in the timeline. If we head into our options and switch to the checkerboard background, we can see the white is revealing itself, but the center is solid. Now we're going to remove this black from the other layer with a demold. Now if you applied it straight onto the layer, it just disappears. It's doing what it's meant to do, removing the black. You need to first create a gray layer to compact the two. 
then apply demult to remove the middle section. I want to try and make these edges a bit thinner. Now I could just readjust the timing, though I don't have much room to play with in terms of frames per second. So as an alternative, head into the matte enhancement folder to apply erode white. And now we can just bring in these edges. To distort these edges even more and get them glitchy, apply block displacement and like before, scale it all down, widen the aspect ratio to get a nice breaking. And hey, why not throw in another heat distortion on there just to make it less uniform. With all our effects set, let's jump into our main composite shot and tie these together with some effects. Now the show has a TV signal effect that we can try and replicate using VGHS D-Res. First off, let's create a grey layer and place it underneath the second plate. You can find D-Res in the distort effects. Now you could use all the features in D-Res for your own transitions, though all I really want to keep are the wavy lines. So I'll switch the view to wavy lines and then set the matte to our circle reveal. This will cause it to activate first, followed by the glitching tear. This is where you can customize and play with the settings to get something really unique. We can then enter the color settings and alter this to match the reference. I'll take the midtones and shadows towards deep blue, then the highlights into the red. Happy with the tones, switch the blend mode to either add or screen. If it seems a little too intense, apply a curves effect and bring down the midtones. Chromatic aberration is also a great effect to be applied on this layer if you're working in HitFilm Pro. Finally, to match this all to our matte reveals, apply a set matte to the top of the effects listing, setting the layer to matte reveal, source to luminance, blend to replace with invert enabled. You'll now have a TV echo in your transition. Though to make this effect stand out, let's create a larger displacement when the transition happens. Create a new gray layer placed above the wavy lines we've just created. Search and apply lens distort. We're going to keyframe this over a few seconds as the transition begins to help highlight the tearing. Start with the distortion amount at 0, then have it decreased to negative 0.8. We only need this to be subtle. Now we can apply another set matte. Setting the layer to our circle reveal, source to luminance, blend to subtract and enable invert. All you can see right now is the area within the mask. So set the blend mode to something suitable like screen or lighten. Now let's start making that red tear. Now we've been using our matte layers with visibility off, but we're actually going to be using our edges as an actual layer. Enable visibility and bring it to the top of the layers. What's one more distortion layer going to hurt? I ended up applying one energy distortion to break up some of the blocks. In order to have the tearing and glitching happen outside of the area, we're going to be using a pixel sort. If you're unfamiliar, this effect is a lot of fun, allowing you to take color information from one image and use another to offset and distort it. Apply Pixel Sort from Grunge Effects, and let's begin by setting our order form. This will be Plate 1, then setting the grouping from to Plate 2. Now this is going to depend on your shot that you're working with, but to first see what we're doing, rotate the direction 90 degrees. Now we can head down to the Reveal Mode and switch to Flow Over Bright, and enable Sort Transparent. And now we have more chaos! From here, it's a case of altering the settings for your brightness and threshold. And I encourage you to play with the different color tones. They can get some really nice effects in there. To finally change this into a red energy, this can easily be done with a Light Sword Ultra Glow. I even used the red preset and then just lowered the inner and outer glow settings till we had something that worked. Soften it all with the diffuse and setting the layers blend mode to add. For more glows and details, you can duplicate this layer, head into Pixel Sort and change the direction to the opposite side for more chaos. You can now alter reality without an Infinity Stone. Thank you for watching this tutorial, we really do hope that you enjoyed it, and if you have, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the bell if you want to be notified on when we next upload, and we will see you next time.